All right, and we are live. Good evening po sa, sa inyong lahat mga kaguro. And of course, welcome back to Gurung Pinoy. Of course, welcome back sa lahat ng members ng ating Team Piaché, yung ating mga babies. Of course, if you are a member of Team Piaché, you have answered our quizzes. Our final coaching quizzes have all been reopened. Even the final final coaching no, ng ibang uh, previous let natin na reopened na din para sa ating Team Piaché. And of course, you can watch the full-length video. You can download our PDF files. You have enjoyed our pre-board. And of course, this is still final coaching this is day 10 and so again welcome back po good evening good evening sa lahat ng members ng ating team piache now um again members of team piache ganun din po sa ating group na final coaching and classified files at ganun din po sa ating group na classified files alone there is a google form that has been posted in your group so again please complete this form by thursday that's tomorrow september 22nd and this is where we are going to be sending your classified files so again Make sure that you have already filled this form uh, by tomorrow. No, and of course, make sure that you are using a valid email. Yung email po niyo wala po uh, dapat that uh, edu that ph no. Um, if you can use a personal email, then make sure that it is a personal valid email that you're using. Now, if you are still not a member of Piaché of our final coaching and also of our classified files, the group, our last day of membership would be on on Sunday, on September 25th. That is for let October 2, 2022. So again, kung gusto nyo pa pong humabol, mga kaguro, Team Piaché is 2,500. That's one year worth of all videos and all files. And of course, your final coaching classified files are already free for Team Piaché. We also have our group that's 1,500. That's final coaching plus classified files. So final coaching alone, that's 11 videos, 11 discussion, 11 files. And of course, also our classified files. And of course, kung hindi pa rin kaya, we also have our group that's classified files alone. That's only 500 pesos. Your classified files, again, that's going to be uh, next week. No discussion at the next week. Again, yung idi discuss natin sa classified files would be how how do you shade your answer sheet? What are some of the things that you need to bring? What are some of the annexes that you need to bring? I'm also going to give you the link for your annex. No, ano pa kailangan mong uh, dalhin yung uh, vaccination card, yung um, kailangan niyo pa bang mag-quarantine, whatever. No, uh, paano mag-shade ng inyong answer sheet? Paano yung inyong gagawin once you enter your, your room? No, uh, and so we will be discussing that during the classified files discussion of course included are the different items that are the favorites of the lab and a lot of secret files okay so again that's only 500 pesos kung kaya niyo mag classified files kung kaya niyo mag final coaching plus classified files that's 1500 and for team piache again that's one year worth of materials that's 2500 again our last day of membership would only be until sunday september 25th because again we are going to be collecting your emails for the classified files so wala na po tayong time to collect your emails after sunday so magpa member na po na po kayo kung hindi pa kayo member ng Gurung Pinoy. Alright, to send a message to our Facebook page where you are currently watching on Facebook, that's Gurung Pinoy. And of course, if you are watching us on YouTube, just go to our Facebook page again, that's Gurung Pinoy. Now, if you will be taking Lalet naman in March next year, we have Team Bruner. Our orientation would begin or would have we will we'll have our orientation October 9th. Diagnostic tests are scheduled on October 15th and 16th, Okay. Again, just send a message to our Facebook page at Gurung Pinoy. If you'd want to become a member of Team Bruner, we will start by October. And of course, we will end and uh, by March, no, the day prior to your let. Okay, so again, magpa-member na po kayo mga kaguro. I'm pretty sure you are not going to regret becoming mem a member of Gurung Pinoy. All the Gurung Pinoy members can attest to that. Alagang-alaga kayo ng Gurung Pinoy. We will do everything in our power to help you pass the let. And of course, tatambakan namin kayo ng files. Tatambakan namin kayo ng materials para walang kawala ang let. Okay? Now, if you also know our, or some of our kaguro would like to teach in the U.S., uh, po pwede din po kayong mag-refer mag no, sa ating program. That's, there's going to be a program that's going to be posted, of course, on our Facebook page. Antabayanan niyo lamang po lahat ng details on this. We are going to start registering soon. This program will be in November, okay? So if you know someone who is already licensed, have already been teaching for at least two years in a regular classroom setup, 
and would like to teach in the U.S., we are going to have our Teach in the U.S. Now program, and this is going to start registering very, very soon. By November, we will be talking about this, okay? So just tell them to send a message to our Facebook page. Now, once again, this is Final Coaching Day 10, second to the last Final Coaching Day for October 2, 2022, in the Licensure Exam for Teachers. The last day for Final Coaching will be tomorrow. Okay, so tomorrow po may klase tayo. Wala po tayong klase on Friday because may, may out of town si Coach Mech. No? So tomorrow instead of Friday, that's for your final coaching day 11. And again, we will be reopening all the final coaching links ng quizzes for our final coaching group and also, of course, for our uh, team Piacena group. Again, please do like, love, share our video, start a watch party, tag your friends. And of course, if you can, send us stars, send us super chat, super stickers naman dyan sa YouTube. Yung star spot sa ating Facebook page. Maraming salamat to all our star senders, super chatters. And again, please do like, love, share our video, start a watch party, tag your friends. Kung ready ka na maging LPT, is share ang ating video. Kung ready ka na mag-tap ng ating licensure exam for teachers, is share ang ating video. And of course, we are going to start after our opening prayer. Okay, we start with our opening prayer. Please join us, mga kaguro. Dear Lord, I come to you to ask for your guidance and direction in this study session. I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with strength, creativity, and understanding to get through my studies without difficulty or sin. Help me hold my focus and attention. Help me to retain all that I learn. Please make my mind sharp and keep distractions at bay. If any part of my studying is weak or lacking in some way, let it be revealed so that I may correct it. Thank you for this opportunity to learn. Amen. All right, then once again, this is Final Coaching Day 10. Please do like, love, share our video, start a watch party, tag your friends. Again, if you are ready to pass the let, mag-like na, mag-love, at mag-share ng ating video. We will be starting in a few minutes. Um, for our classified files, you need your PDF reader, okay? So some of the files are in PDF form. So uh, make sure that you have your PDF reader. Magamit po, no? gumamit po kayo ng Adobe. Uh, kung hindi naman, WPS, itry kung paano po na, kung, kung uh, paano nyo download yung files, no? So again, please make sure that you have completed our form. And make sure that you have a valid um, personal email address because that is where we will be sending all of the files. Okay, again, please do like, love, share our video, start a watch party, tag your friends, send us stars on Facebook, Super Chat Super Stickers naman on YouTube. We start with question number one. Okay, number one, which questioning practice promotes more class interaction? Is it letter A, asking rhetorical questions? Letter B, focusing on convergent actions? Letter C, focusing on divergent questions? Or letter D, calling a student to answer before asking the student? Okay, what is our choice for question number one? Very easy question, very common question. Ano po yung ating uh, sagot for question number one? Okay, number one, what is your choice? Okay, number one, ICC is. Kung meron pong caption sa ating video, po, pwede nyo po siyang i-turn off. No? Hanapin nyo po yung three buttons or three dots at i-turn off nyo po yung ating caption kung kayo po ay nadi-distract sa caption sa baba ng ating video. Okay, I see a lot of letter C's for question number one. Okay, letter C, question number one. Mm -hmm. All right, for number one, again, which questioning practice promotes more class interaction? And of course, the correct choice would be letter C, focusing on divergent questions. Again, the difference between convergent questions and divergent questions would be, ang converge mo, when you say converge, that means 
it is going to just one point, no? So when you say convergent question, there's only one answer, okay? So for example, you say, what's the name of our planet? The Earth, no? What is the largest planet? Jupiter, okay? Um, who gave us the different laws of motion? Isaac Newton, okay? So that's convergent questions. There's only one answer. But when you say divergent questions from the term diverge, no? So when you say diverge, Iba-iba yung po pwedeng maging sagot ng inyong students. These are also called open-ended questions. So ito yung mga what-if questions, hypothetical questions. Ito yung mga questions, examples of these are those questions that are asked in Miss Universe kung kayo ay pagentera. Um, na natanong na to sa, sa inyo no kung kayo ay nanonood ng Miss Q&A sa Showtime, ito yung mga klase ng question na doon ay tinatanong no, sa divergent questions, open-ended questions. And so pag ganito yung mga binabato mong questions sa ating sudyante, the students become more alive and the students of course are going to interact more because they are able to come up with different answers your questions na depende sa konteksto at depende sa karanasan ng inyong mga estudyante. Now, rhetorical questions, these are rhetorics. No? Usually, we use this in logic. We also use this in uh, English. No? So, medyo mahirap siya. Malalalim na questions itong rhetorical questions mo. Letter D, calling also out a student or calling a student to answer before asking the question. This is not the right method of your questioning inside the classroom. Now, so hindi po pwedeng i call out mo muna yung, sto yung isang sujante and then you you give the question because when that happens, when that happens is um. Uh, yung ibang ibang estudyante mo hindi na magthi-think hindi na sila mag-iisip dahil meron ng naka-assign na sasagot sa inyong question okay so dapat ay you throw out the question and of course importante din that you have your wait period no may wait period ka wait period number one is the time when the time after you throw out the question and of course uh, you give them a chance to to um to process a question no, in their mind of course to so also construct their answer that's wait time one or wait period one and then once they answer you also have to to have that wait period two no wait period two naman nating sinasabi would be the time that you pause before you react to the answer of your students okay so again there's wait period one and wait period two your wait period one is the time that you have to wait before you ask one student to answer your question Question, or you ask one volunteer to answer the question. Your wait period to naman is the time that you wait before you react after your classmate, uh, your classmate, uh, your classmate, your students have answered the questions. Okay, but again for number one, C is tumpa. Congratulations, marami na We move on with question number two, which holds true to norm reference testing. Letter A, comparing individuals' performance to the average performance of a group. Letter B, determining tasks that reflect instructional objectives. Letter C, constructing test items in terms of instructional objective. Or letter D, identifying an acceptable level of mastery in advance. What is our choice for number two? Question number two, what is our choice? Good evening, Sir Ronald Cabrera. Okay, sabi ni Sir Ronald dito, Good evening, Mamet. Salamat po sa walang sawang pagtuturo sa amin. God bless po and keep safe lagi. Maraming salamat. Keep safe din po tayo. Bawal na pong magkasakit na malapit na malapit na po ang inyong licensure exam for teachers. So kung po pwedeng iwasan na muna yung mga matataong lugar, iwasan din yung masyadong pagpupuyat, no? Know when to rest. Remember your plateau of learning. If you have already reached the plateau of learning, hindi na pumapasok yung inyong binabasa, hindi na pumapasok yung inyong pinag-aaralan, learn when to rest, okay? Take some time to rest. Okay lang po mapagod, no? Pero hindi okay yung mamatay sa kakapa, kakapuyat, no? So, huwag po masyadong magpuyat din. Be healthy, so that you'll be able to reach your dream of becoming licensed professional teachers. Malapit na malapit na, no? Exciting. Papunta na tayo sa exciting na part. Okay, number two, I see A's. Okay, letter A. My question ako nakita, no, about sa um, outfit. Okay, included din po yan sa ating discussion during the classified files. Okay, so if you are a member of Team Pieche, Final Coaching, Classified Groups, Nandiyan din po yan sa ating discussion. 
Okay, now norm reference testing is our question in question number two. Now remember the different um, two different types of references. Okay, so first one is your criterion reference, and secondly, you also have your norm reference testing. Your criterion reference testing from the term criteria, you have your set criteria. No meron ka ng pamantayan. Okay, so you have your instructional objectives, you have your uh, mastery, okay? So instructional objectives, instructional objective then yung in yung letter C, and set level of mastery. Now, this is your criteria. Ito po ay all, all parts of your criterion reference testing. You are not comparing the performance of one student with the performance of the rest of the students, but you are comparing the performance of that particular student with the set criteria, with your objectives, with the level of mastery. And so the correct choice, of course, would be letter A. No? This is comparing individuals' performance to the average performance of a group. Okay, so that's correct. That's tumpak for question number two. Uh, okay. Uh, maraming salamat muna kay Ma'am Joanna Sible for sending us a super sticker dito sa ating YouTube channel. Salamat po, Ma'am Mek. Marami po akong natutunan. Thank you. And of course, hangad natin na kayo ay maging licensed professional teachers very, very soon. We move on with question number three. The mode of a score distribution is 25. This means that letter A, 25 is the average of the score distribution. Letter B, 25 is the score that, at le that occurs least. Letter C, 25 is the score that occurs most. Or letter D, there is no score of 25. What is our choice? Mm hmm Okay, what is our choice for question number three? Sir Wilmer Gutierrez, basahin ko lamang yung comment. Yung sir, no, feeling ko ready na ako pag mga final coaching natin ang sinasagutan ko. Pero pag yung mga previous final coaching ng Gurung Pinoy, 30 out of 50 lamang. Na mali, na mali yata ako sa settings, no? hindi nyo nakikita yung, inyong, yung answers. So let me fix that later. No, I will try to fix the the link sa ating quizzes sa final coaching that was from January no and then of course you are going to reopen the final coaching for March and June so antabayanan niyo po yan mga kaguro okay again that's for our team Pache babies okay so antabayanan niyo po yan okay what is your choice for number 3 i see a lot of letter c's Okay, for number three dito, sabi niya, the mode of a score distribution is 25. This means that letter A, 25 is the average of the score distribution. Letter B, 25 is the score that occurs least. Letter C, 25 is a score that occurs most. Or letter D, there is no score of 25. Okay, there is no score of 25. Now remember, your mode is a part of your uh, measures of central tendency. Kung gaano ka clumped, gaano ka close together yung scores mo, no? There are three three types of central tendency tendency in a measurement: your median, your mean, and your mode. Your mean that's the average. Okay. If there is a question in math, na yung binigay ay mean, wag na po kayong uh, magtaka kung ano yung mean. Of course, we all know mean mean is the average no pag binigay sa isang math problem sinabi na the mean is like this that uh, mean of course is equal to the average no that's the average when you say median naman that's the middlemost score so what you have to do if you are given a score distribution and you are being asked for the median you have to arrange them first from lowest to largest no so from lowest muna ya yeah, arrange mo yung scores from lowest to largest, and you get the middlemost score. Okay lamang kung ang inyong score distribution ay odd, no? So, pag, for example, 11 yung score mo, 5 yung score mo, it's very easy to see your median. No? So, um, make sure that you have the middlemost score. There's going to be equal number of scores at both sides of your median. Kapag ka even number naman ang inyong score distribution, kunwari, binigay sa inyo anim na scores, or 10 the scores, what you would do is you get the two middlemost scores, you add them and divide by two, no? or you simply get their average, and that's going to be your median. Now, the mode, which is the part of our question for number three here, this is the most 
frequently occurring score. Ito yung palaging scores na lumalabas. No? That's the mode. And so the correct choice here would be letter C. 25 is a score that occurs most because we are talking about the mode. Okay? Again, the mode is the score that's most frequently occurring. So letter C for question number three. We move on with... Question number four, which one describes the percentile rank of a given score? This is related to your non-referencing tests. Letter A, the percent of cases of a distribution within the given score. Letter B, the percent of cases of a distribution above the given score. Letter C, the percent of cases of a distribution below and above the given score. Or letter D, the percent of cases of a distribution below the given score. Okay, what is our choice for number four? Maraming salamat, Sir J.R. Sireno, for sending us a super sticker sa ating YouTube channel. Maraming maraming salamat po. Okay. All right, what is our choice for question number four? Mm-hmm. All right, basahin ko lamang ang, ang comment ni Ma'am. Hindi ko na nakita yung comment. Ma'am Estelle Tangko, maraming salamat po for sending us a super sticker. Kapag kayo po ay nagsend ng super sticker, no? Or stars at hindi ko napansin dahil marami po tayo nagko-comment, pasensya na po. But of course, we are very appreciative of all the support that you are giving Guru Pinoy. Kahit share lang na napakalaking bagay na po so that we can reach out to more kaguro. Mamruwena Traya, maraming salamat for sending us stars dito sa ating Facebook page. Thank you po, Mamruwena. Okay, what is our choice? Okay, so again, wag po kayong kabahan, no? lalong na kapag ka kayo ay member ng ating Team Piaché, kahit na ilang beses na po tayong na-fail, no? wag po kayong kabahan. Marami po tayong mga kaguro na nagpaalaga sa Gurong Pinoy at ngayon ay mga licensed professional teachers na the most, that, though, the highest uh, number of times that I have seen, no? na isang kaguro natin na comment 18 times na kumuha ng let. And of course, sa Gurong Pinoy, naipasa na niya yung let. Ma'am Sarah Jane Mangubat, maraming maraming salamat po, ma'am, for sending us a super sticker. So wag po kayong kabahan, especially if you are part of Team Piaché. Kayang, 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 kaya po yan. Okay? So sabayan lamang po ng dasal. And of course, sabayan din ng pagsisipag. Andiyan na po lahat ng ating videos, lahat ng ating files sa Team Piaché. Lahat po ay gagawin natin. Magtatumbling, magsisplit po si, si Coach Mac para po kayo ay ma makapasa. No? So again, um, some, some of our kaguros ay kumuha, nag-take the let 18 times, 15 times, 10 times, 8 times, at ngayon ay pasado na po. Okay? So, wag pong kabahan. Magtiwala lamang po, of course, sa Panginoon, sa inyong kakayahan, and of course, sa Gurong Pinoy. Kayang-kaya po natin yan. Ma'am Niyaso, MZ, maraming salamat po for sending us stars. Okay, now which one describes the percentile rank of a given score? Kunwari, eh, 85%. Again, pag uh, percentile rank yung ating pinag-uusapan, this is norm referencing. You are trying to compare the performance of a student with that of the entire group. So anong ibig sabihin, for example, ng 85% the percentile rank? Is it better A, the percent of cases of a distribution within the given score? So within the given score, yung 85%. Letter B, the percent of cases says above the given score. Now, sa 85%, yung scores ng in, yung, inyong mga classmates above your score. Is it letter C, the percent of cases of cases of a distribution below and above? Or is it letter D, the percent of cases of a distribution below the given score? Okay? What is your choice for number four? I see A's, uh, D's. Okay, iba-iba yung ating sagot, no? Mukhang maraming ligwa. 
All right. The correct choice here for number four is letter D, the percent of cases of a distribution below the given score. Okay. So when you say 85%, that means you have scored higher than 85% of your classmates. Okay. So again, makinig. When you say 85%, ang inyong percentile rank, you have scored 85% higher than the rest of your classmates. Okay, so uh, yung choice natin dito would be the percent of cases. The rest of the cases would uh, would would fall below your given score. No, 85% sa inyong mga estudyante ang below sa inyong given score. Okay, so letter D for question number four. Letter D po ang ating tumpak na choice. Okay lang maligwak. Importante sa October 2, tama na yung ating choice. We go to number five, to the rationalist, which is the highest faculty of a man. Letter A, senses. Letter B, reason. Letter C, emotion. Or letter D, will. What is our choice? Okay, sabi ni Sir Jeff, TVPH. Yun pala yun, wala kasing situation. No? Now, again, uh, importante na iintindihan natin yung konsepto para kahit na balibalik ta rin yung ating question ay naiintindihan natin, malalaman natin kung ano yung tumpak na choice. Okay? So, dapat eh, naiintindihan yung question. Yung pong importante, especially if it's prof ed. Okay, number five, ICBs. Okay, rationalize equals reason, sabi ng isa nating kaguro. Okay, and for number five, of course, the correct choice would be letter B, reason. Okay, reasoning, rationalist, that's rationalism, or that will be reasoning. Okay, that's letter B, reason for question number five, not your senses, not the emotions, not the will. Okay, so number five, the correct choice would be a reason, no? Uh, empiricist mo itong senses. Okay? So, empiricism itong sense experience is the highest faculty of men. But for your rationalist, reasoning is the highest faculty of men. Okay? We go to number six. The index of difficulty of a particular test is uh, point 10. What does this mean? My students, blank. Letter A, found the test item was neither easy nor difficult. Letter B, performed very well against expectation. Letter C, were hard up in that item. Or letter D, gain mastery over that item. Okay, what is our choice for question number six? Okay, meron tayong request dito. Hello po, Coach Mech. Sana po maagahan ang pag-send ng classified files para po makastudy kami sa weekends. Thank you so much po. Okay, now again, remember, tomorrow we still have final coaching day 11. That's the last day of our final coaching for October 2 na licensure exam for teachers. After tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night, I will try to reopen all your final coaching links. Uh, including 9, 10, 11. No? Yan na lang naman yung ating kulang. And then again, I will reopen the final coaching links for March and June. Okay, so i reopen natin yan. Now, sa request ni Sir Lamy, or Ma'am Lamy, uh, kaya po kayo ay uh, pinapakompleto ko po sa inyo yung form by Thursday para uh, we will try by Friday na tayo ay makapagpasa na ng ating classified files. Now, again, while waiting, please make sure that you have your PDF reader. Okay? And uh, meron pa po kayong storage, no? Meron pang storage yung inyong drives. Meron pang memory para pag uh, masyado marami ng files, uh, pwede nyo pa rin ma-save, no? Now, again, remember, please uh, respect our intellectual property. Do not send it to someone who is not part of our group. Kayo po yung ating inaalagaan. So, make sure that you are keeping our file sacred. Okay? So, I will try to send it by Friday. But then again, make sure that you have completed our files by Thursday night. Okay? At sa hindi pa po members, magpa-member na po by Sunday. The last day for our membership would be Sunday. Okay, number six. I see a lot of letter A's. Mm -hmm. Okay, number six, letter A. Okay, so sabi dito sa number six, your index of difficulty is 0.10. 
Okay, so kasi when you are given the decimal, no, decimal ito na 0.10 or 0.10, po pwede mo siyang i-convert into percentage, no? So what you do is you simply move the decimal point two times to the right and of course you write your percentage sign. So that means yung 0.10 or 0.10 mo dito, this would be equal to 10%. So 10% lamang ng inyong mga estudyante yung nakakuha ng tumpak na choice, no? Uh, so what does this mean? My students blank. Now, if you can see, okay, sabi ng letter A mo, found the test item was neither easy nor difficult, no? So, medium lamang yung difficulty ng item. Letter B, performed very well. Ang letter D mo, ganun din, gain mastery over that item. Your B and D are the same, no? Performed very well. They have gained mastery. That means na master na nila, they have performed very well. But it's only 10%. So remember, this is 0 0.10 or 0.10. In decimal, in percentage, this would be 10%. 10% lamang ng inyong estudyante yung nakakuha ng tumpak na choice. And so letter C, ang ating uh, choice dito, no? we're hard up in that item na nahirapan yung inyong mga estudyante in that particular item. Okay, maraming salamat, Ma'am Adjela Apostol, for sending us a super sticker. Maraming maraming salamat po, Ma'am Adjela. Okay, so letter C ang ating tumpak na choice for number six. We move on with question, uh, but before we go to that, this is your indices no, for level of difficulty index range, range from 0 0.00 to 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.2 or 0 0.20. It's very difficult, okay? So 0 0.10 mo kanina nandito. It's very difficult. Your students were hard up in that item. 0 0.21 to 0 0.40, it's a difficult item, no? 0 0.41 to 0 0.60, it's average, moderately difficult item because, of course, 0 0.5 is in the middle. 0 0.61 to 0 0.80, it's an easy item because if you try to write this into percentage, you know, this would be 61%, 80% of your students got the item correctly. 0 0.81 to 1, 1 1.00, if you move the decimal point two times to the right and make this into your percentage, this is going to be 100%. So 100% of your students got the item correct and so or correctly. And so the correct choice are, no, this means that the item is very easy, okay? Very easy. And so your choice again for number six is letter C. We go to number seven, very common question. Jose reads was for saw or D for P or B. From his reading behavior, one can say that Jose suffers from blank, letter A, dysgraphia, letter B, dyslexia, letter C, dysphasia, or letter D, dyspraxia. What is our choice for number seven? Okay, number seven, what is our choice? Mm-hmm. Okay, number seven, I see a lot of letter Bs. Ma'am Norshima Araktukulan, maraming salamat po for sending us stars. Assalamu alaikum po to all our Muslim brothers and sisters. Kawai kawai, marami po tayong, tayong mga Muslim brothers and sisters dito. Again, assalamu alaikum po sa inyong lahat. Okay, malapit na maging licensed professional teachers lahat. Again, if you have questions about... Uh, our our membership, send lamang po na message ating Facebook page. If you are watching us on Facebook right now, that is a Facebook page of Gurung Pinoy. So, dyan po kayo mag-send okay, ng ating message. Okay, basahin ko lamang yung comment ni Ma'am Christine Kakafranca. Na anak ko'y laing review center, nag apilan pero wala na kampante. Maong ni join ko? Sa Team Piaché, karon confident na ko nga ma-LPT na ko this October 2. Thanks to you, Ma'am Mek. Okay, so maraming salamat. Inaintindihan naman natin no, yung uh, comment ni Ma'am Christine. Sabi niya meron na siyang Ginoyna na review center, pero hindi pa siya kampante. Ngayong nag-join na siya sa Team Piaché, confident na siya to take the let. No? And so again, kapag ka ikaw ay member ng Team Piaché, I'm pretty sure na na-confident na kayo. Alam na alam nyo na kung paano lalaruin yung let. Okay? So, medyo less ka ba na? Alright, I see a lot of letter Bs for question number 7. 
And so letter B again, ang ating compact na choice here. No? This is dyslexia. If you can remember again, yung classic example natin is si Ishan sa Every Child is Special na movie. No? Um, siya ay hindi masyadong nakakapagbasa because of course he had dyslexia and uh, he would always say the letters are dancing. No? So that's di being dyslexia. Na interchange mo yung mga letters. So it's a reading uh, or it's a learning disability in reading. Maraming salamat muna kay Sir Fitzgerald Almazon for sending us a super sticker. Now, this graphia, uh, the rest of your, your learning disabilities here. Now, this calculia, again, this is difficulty with math. This graphia, your choice A, is difficulty in writing. And this praxia, this naman is difficulty with fine motor skills. Okay, so uh, your choice here is letter B, dyslexia, dysphagia. This is difficulty in speech. Now, ito yung meron si... Si, um, si Bruce Willis, no? Bruce Willis sa ngayon, meron siyang dysphagia. Okay, but letter B, yung ating choice for question number seven. We move on with question number eight. In which cognitive development stage is a child unable to distinguish between his own perspective and someone else's? Letter A, pre-operational stage. Letter B, concrete operational stage. Letter C, sensory motor stage. Or letter D, formal operational stage. What is our choice for question number eight? Number eight, what is our choice? Ma Maria Cecilia Sioko, meron na po bang audio? Uh, Sir Renante Elias, mag-send po na message in this page, no, after po ninyong manood. Sir Velasquez, mid-19, mid or ma'am Velasquez, mid-19, maraming salamat for being one of our star senders. Okay, what is our choice for question number eight? Number eight, tingnan natin, ang karamihan ng inyong choice is letter A. Okay, so sabi na number eight, in which cognitive development stage is a child unable to distinguish between his own perspective and someone else's? Unang-una muna, no, ano ba yung ating pinag-uusapan? Anong characteristic ito ng isang... Uh, bata in this certain stage, what is this characteristic? When the child is unable to distinguish between his own perspective and someone else's, ano ito? Okay, anong characteristic ito? Egocentrism, tama, no? Egocentrism po yan. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's egocentrism. So where can you find that characteristic in the four stages of cognitive development, according to Jean Pache, saan makikita yung egocentrism? And of course, the correct choice would be letter A, pre-operational stage. Balikan natin yung uh, periods of cognitive development. Remember, you have four different stages, smart people, cook fish, Sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete operational, and formal operational. Now, from the term sensory motor sa inyong first stage, the child is using his senses to improve his motor skills. No? So, he uses his senses, motor skills, um, object permanence, yung pinaka milestone dito. Once na na-reach na ng child yung object permanence, that means po pwede na siyang ma-move on sa next level. No? When you say object permanence, alam na niya na kahit na-covered yung isang bagay, ay nandyan pa rin yung isang bagay. Alam na niya na kahit si nanay ay pumunta sa work, his nanay exists. No? Kaya yung during this time, meron ng separation anxiety yung anak nyo no kapag ka nagbay kayo pupunta na kayo sa work umiiyak na yung anak nyo because the anak already knows or the anak has already reached the object permanence na stage no 
because prior to this, yung child mo meron pang what you call out of sight, out of mind. Kapag hindi niya nakikita, hindi niya naaalala. No? But once the child has reached object permanence, alam na niya na even if this um, this object is hidden or this object is covered, it's just there. No? So that's object permanence. Now, the next stage is pre-operational. You have your symbolic thinking. The child's imagination is very wild. The child is talking to um the different objects inside the the room no and the child thinks that the the fan the wall the doors can all talk can all can all socialize with him no that symbolic thinking language is used language is being developed and egocentrism ito kanina yung ating pinag-uusapan the child is very selfish the child thinks that what he can see the rest of the people around him can also see imagination his experience grows and the milestone would be the child decenters no because prior to this the child still has centration the child is focused on just one aspect of an object Okay. Now, the next stage is concrete operational logic can already be applied, but just using concrete objects. Was ulap pa masyadong abstract na na uh, logic yung bata, no? Uh, conservation is reached. That means the child has already decentered nga, hindi lamang focus sa isang aspeto ng isang bagay. But the child already knows na kahit na ilipat niya into a taller, narrower glass, yung 100 ml of water, the amount the, or the volume stays the same. Numbers are learned, the concept of numbers, seriation is done. No? The child can already form series, the child can already classify, but again, then again, remember, no? Uh, the child still uses concrete objects when they're learning. Then, of course, you have formal operational, that's hypothetical thinking, abstract reasoning, and so on, okay? And so um, your choice there would be pre-operational stage because that's where you find egocentrism. All right, we move on with question number nine, which developmental stage is sometimes called the preschool years? Letter A, middle childhood. Letter B, adolescence. Letter C, early childhood. Or letter D, late infancy. What is our choice for number nine? Ma'am Mary Grace R. Cabahog. Maraming salamat po for sending us a super sticker. Thank you so much. Uh, Sir Mark Salem, sana po matackle din ang Bronfenbrenner. Mahina po kasi ako about this theory. Meron po tayong video niyan sa ating YouTube channel. No? I-type niyo lamang po, Guru Pinoy, Bronfenbrenner. Meron po tayong one video kung saan Bronfenbrenner lamang po yung ating pinag-uusapan. So, napin niyo po yan. Again, if you still have time, no, mag-movie marathon po. We have so many videos sa ating YouTube channel. Uh, may videos tayo on the isms of education. Uh, the different um, fundamentals of education, my three videos tayo on curriculum development, my uh, five pillars of learning, mean, median, mode, my uh, videos tayo on front frame Brenner, may video tayo on OBE. Okay, so lahat po yan, balikan ninyong lahat. All right, letter C, sabi ni Ma'am Nad Rubia Torino. Number nine, letter C. Yung inyo pong hint dito ay preschool, okay? Preschool years. And of course, that would be letter C, early childhood. So letter letter C po for number nine, that's correct. Early childhood, yung ating tumpak na choice for number nine. We move on with question number 10. According to Piaget's theory, in which developmental stage can the child do symbolic thinking and go beyond the connection of sensory information and physical action. Letter A, pre-operational. Letter B, concrete operational. Letter C, formal operational. Or letter D, sensory motor. Okay, what is our choice for question number 10? Okay, what is our choice for question number 10? All right, again, um, the last day for our membership is only until Sunday, no? Because nangangala pa po tayo, kinokollect po natin lahat ng inyong email for our classified files. If you are already a member of Team Piaché or Final Coaching or Classified Files Group, make sure that you have completed the Google form dahil dyan po isi-send yung ating classified files. Make sure that you have a PDF reader. Make sure that meron na pong may, may available storage yung inyong phone or inyong laptops if you are using your laptops and of course make sure that you are ready for tomorrow's final coaching no final coaching natin last day for tomorrow 
And classified files would be by next week. Okay, so uh, kumain ng maayos, kumain ng sapat, matulog ng sapat. Huwag masyadong mag-isip, no? Baka hindi mag-ising sa October 2, no? Sana wag naman. Okay, mag-pray, of course. Um, maganda lang sapat lamang. Okay, mag-join sa Gurong Pinoy para siguradong siguradong papasa. Okay, number 10, what is our choice? Symbolic thinking. Go beyond the connection of sensory information and physical action. Ito po yung ating pinakahint dito. No? Go beyond sensory. Okay, that means it is the stage that comes after your sensory motor stage. Your piaché stages are smart people, cook fish, sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete operational, and formal operational. And so the correct choice here is pre-operational, no? after symbolic thinking, uh, or not after symbolic thinking, no? the child can already do symbolic thinking rather, and after sensory information. And so letter A po ang tumpak na choice dito. Now remember, after sensory motor stage, you have pre-operational, then concrete operational, then formal operational. Pre-operational is where the child can do symbolic thinking. So letter A for question number 10. We go to number 11, which teaching, which teaching method is intended primarily for skill and concept mastery by way of practice, letter A, project, letter B, supervised study, letter C, drill, or letter D, review. What is our choice for question number 11? Mom Cherry May Lu Chavez, maraming maraming salamat po for sending us a super sticker. Thank you, Mom Cherry. Okay, what is our choice? Number 11. Okay, ano kaya ang tumpak na choice for question number 11? All right, number 11, I see C yes. Okay, now you have your terms mastery, no? Mastery po yung ating hinahanap, yung nakikita natin term dito. That is your hint. Remember, mastery, drill would always be together, okay? So drill yung ating compact na choice. For your students to reach mastery, you should give them drills, okay? So ito po yung ginagawa, especially sa math, no? Mastery and drill would always come hand in hand. Kapag ka may mastery sa inyong question, drill yung inyong magiging sagot. Kapag ka may drill sa question, mastery yung magiging sagot. Mastery, drill, and criteria. No? Criterion, reference, testing. Ito po yung always together. Mastery, drill, criterion, reference. Okay? Mastery, drill, criteria. Palagi po sila magkakasama. Okay? So that's letter C for number 11 at your project, supervised study, and review, okay? So 11, letter C, ang ating compact na choice. We go to number 12, in which competency do the students find greatest difficulty? Okay, is it letter A, 0 0.10, letter B, 0 0.90, letter C, 1.00, or letter D, 0 0.50? Uh, Facebook user, Mamek, ano nga ulit yung classified files na pinapaliwanag kanina? Again, yung, sa classified files po, unang-una natin pag-uusapan the do's and don'ts of the let. Uh, what are you going to bring sa let? Are you going to quarantine or not? Are you going to um, um, bring your health declaration form or not? Your VAX certificate or not? What are you going to wear? What will you do? What are some of the other things that you need to bring? Uh, how are you going to answer the gen ed, the prof ed? How are you going to shade the answer sheet? Ilang oras ba yung gen ed? Ilang oras yung prof ed? Ilang oras yung major? Ilang percentage dapat para makapasa? And so on and so forth. No, That's your do's and don'ts of the let, the ins and outs of the let. Yan po yung unang-una natin pag-uusapan sa ating classified files. Then of course, uh, you are asked to complete the form. Nandiyan po yung form sa ating piache or sa final coaching na group or sa classified files na group, kompletuhin yung form, make sure na valid, email address yung inyong nilagay, at personal na email address, wala po yung .edu.ph kasi baka hindi po kayo maka-receive maka no, ng ating files. And make sure that you have your PDF reader no? pa, kasi ibang nating files are in PDF form. Okay, so 
by Thursday, by tomorrow, eh, complete na po yung form para po makareceive kayo. No? I will try na by Friday ay makapagsend ako ng ibang files. And again, wala po tayong pasok. No? Wala po tayong klase sa Friday because may out of town po ako. Yung pasok po natin for the last final coaching day would be tomorrow. Okay, so tomorrow night, meron pa po tayong pasok. And Friday, I will be reopening your final coaching, all links until final coaching 11. Then the rest of the final coaching, then um, your uh, classified files, unti-untiin ko na by Friday. Okay? So make sure again na na-follow nyo na yung instructions at na-completo nyo na yung form for our classified files. Okay? Uh, now, number 12. Ano po yung ating compact na choice? Number 12, ICAs, na? So in which competency do the students find greatest difficulty? Yung hinahanap dito, greatest difficulty. Saan nahirapan yung inyong estudyante? Now remember, kapag ka, uh, 0.10 ito, okay, 0.10 ito, mm -hmm, ay po pwede mo siyang isulat as percentage. No? So what you do, pag medyo hirap kang i-interpret siya, by looking at the decimals, you make this into percentage, okay? So you move the decimal point two times to the right and write the percentage sign. So 0 0.10 is 10%, 0 0.90 is 90%, 1.00 is 100%. 100% of your students got the item correctly. And um, uh, 0 0.50, that's 50%. We are looking for the the item where the students find the greatest difficulty and so letter A yung ating tumpak na choice, okay? So 0 0.10, that's only 10% of your students got it correctly. So letter A for number 12. We go to number 13. What psychological principle is invoked when a teacher connects the new lesson to the one just completed so that the student may gain a whole, holistic view of the subject? Letter A, conceptualization. Letter B, recognition. Letter C, stimulation. Or letter D, apperception. What's our choice for number 13? Number 13, what is our choice? Uh-huh. Mukhang maraming ligwak sa 13. Okay, karamihan sa inyo, yung choice is letter A, conceptualization. Aha, may ilang letter D. Mukhang maraming ligwak na mukhang genocide yung at number 13. Okay, so number 13 natin dito, sabi, psychological princi principle where the teacher connects the new lesson to the one just completed so that the student may gain a holistic view of the subject. Ang tumpak na choice natin dito is letter D. This is a perception, okay? This is the mental process by which a person makes sense of an idea by assimilating it to the body of ideas he or she already possesses. No? So you add more ideas to the things that you already know, to the ideas that you already possess. No? So that's a perception para may holistic, maging holistic yung view ng students. So letter D po yung ating hinahanap. Now what about the rest of your choices? Conceptualization is the action or process of forming a concept or idea. Dito nagpo-form ka pa lang ng idea. Pero sa inyong a perception ay inorganize mo na yung inyong ideas no? para nga maging whole. Okay? Yung recognition, you identify something or someone from previous encounters or knowledge. Or um, yung stimulation naman, this is the encouragement of something to make it develop. You stimulate something to make it more developed. Okay? So letter D, ang ating tumpak na choice for number 13. Okay? Okay lang po na tayo ay maligwak ngayon. Importante again, October 2, tumpak na ang ating choice. All right, we go to number 14. Teacher D begins her lesson with concrete life experiences, then leads her students to abstraction. Which method does she employ? Okay, letter A, inductive, letter B, deductive, letter C, transductive, or letter D, egocentric. What is our choice for number 14? Number 14, begins her lesson with concrete life experiences, then leads to abstraction. Another term for abstraction is generalization. Okay, so that means sa number 14 mo, si teacher, nag-start with the examples, okay, with the specifics 
at pumunta sa general. Okay, so what is this method? From the specifics, going to the general. From, from concrete, going to the abstract. Tama po yan. No? The correct choice, of course, would be letter A, inductive. You induce them to conduct or to, to come up with a generalization from specifics to general that's inductive. Your deductive is from general to specific. No? So you deduce. You deduce. Kinukuha yung, um, yung um, different examples or specifics from generalization. Okay? And so letter A, inductive, yung ating tumpak na choice for number 14. Transductive again, that's between inductive and deductive. And of course, egocentric, alam nyo na yung uh, meaning nito, no? When the child is selfish, the child can only see uh, his or her idea, his or her view, and not the rest of um, the views of other people. Okay, so letter A, inductive for question number 14. Next one, 15. What is the possible effect of an overcrowded curriculum? If your curriculum is overcrowded, just like the curriculum that we have in the Philippines, no, maraming dapat pag-aralan, um, masyado maraming topics, masyado makapal yung libro na kailangan tapusin ng mga estudyante, would it be letter A, in-depth learning tends to be given greater emphasis. Letter B, lifelong learning skills tend to be fully developed. Letter C, there is lack of personal analysis and reflection on major concepts. Or letter D, there is greater concept of understanding. Okay, what is our choice for 15? Pag napakarami ng topics mo, napakarami ng kailangan mong uh, i-discuss in one school year and so si teacher ay nagmamadali because the teacher needs to discuss the book from cover to cover, no? Then what happens? A letter A mo is very positive. The in-depth learning is great, has greater emphasis. Letter B mo is also positive. Lifelong learning skills are developed. Letter D mo is also positive. There is greater concept of understanding. Letter C is tumpak for number 15. No, tama yan. Sabi ng isang kaguro, hindi ko lang nakita yung name. Negative question, negative answer. Okay, so letter C for number 15. We move on with question number 16. Why is it sound, why is it good to encourage our students to define terms in their own words? Because, letter A, students remember information better when they mentally process it in some way. Letter B, they ought to connect the terms that they learn with other terms. Letter C, this is one opportunity to brush up with their English. Or letter D, defining the terms in their own words helps them memorize the definition faster. Okay, what is our choice? Bakit mo pinaka-define sa isang estudyante or sa inyong mga students yung mga terms using their own words? For example, you're a science teacher. Why do you ask them to define photosynthesis using their own words? Or matter using their own words? Or a polygon using their own words? No? Or, uh, for example, simile using their own words? What's your choice? Okay, the correct choice here, of course, would be letter A. Students remember information better when they mentally process it in some way. This is constructivism, okay? So the students were able to construct their own meaning of the term and um, they, they are able to come up with their own meaning and so learning becomes more meaningful and learning becomes more permanent, no? You don't just give them the different definitions, okay? So, wag lamang ibigay sa kanila yung different definitions. Uh, letter B, they ought to connect the terms that they learn with other terms. It's not for connection of terms. It's not only for their English. And it's not for memorization. No? We, we don't usually encourage memorization. Dapat eh, naintindihan nila yung konsepto. Dapat eh, naintindihan nila yung meaning ng isang term. Kaya pinapagamit mo sila ng kanilang sariling word. Okay? So, this is constructivism. Letter A for, for 16. We go to number 17. Ed, Edgar Dale found out that people generally remember 10% of what they read, but generally remember 90% of what they do. What does this imply to a teacher's instructional planning? Is it letter A, plan a detailed lecture and provide the students 
with your lecture outline. Letter B, give many reading materials to the students. Letter C, plan for an activity where students can do the real thing. Or letter D, outline the lesson on the board. What is our choice for question 17? Okay, what is our choice for number 17? ICCs. So according to Edgar Dale, no, sabi ni Edgar Dale, sa poem ni Edgar Dale, no, you should be giving your students authentic activities, authentic activities. And so the correct choice here would be letter C. Plan for an activity where students can do the real thing. No? When you say authentic assessment, it should be as close to the real thing as possible. Okay, so letter C for number 17, looking at the different things here, um, uh, cone of instruction and Edgar Dale, 10% of what you read, you remember, 20% of what you hear, 30% of what you see, and 50% of what you hear and see. These are all passive ways of learning. 70% of what you say, you remember. Kaya minsan pinapaulit-ulit sa atin no, yung isang term para mas ma-memorize ma natin o mas maalala natin. And 90% of what we say and do, we remember. These are active ways of learning. Okay, so letter C, ang tumpak na choice for this item. We move on with question number 18, which illustrates a proactive approach to discipline. Ito hindi po nawawala sa let na yung proactive and reactive approach. Now remember yung pro, pro means before. So before pa mangyari yung problema sa classroom, meron ka na dapat rules and routines in, in set. No? Meron ka na nakaset na rules and routines para ma-avoid, ma-prevent mo yung problema sa inyong classroom. That's proactive. Pro means before. Ang reactive naman, we of course means again. Okay? Or when you say reactive, meron kang reaction, no? meron kang reaction to a certain problem. So you wait for a problem to happen and then you simply react. No? So yun yung sinasabing reactive. And so mas maigi po yung proactive approach uh, because of course we know that an ounce of prevention is better than a uh, pound of cure. You know, a pound of cure is better. Ano ba? Parang mali yung aking saying. An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Tama naman pala. Okay, so mas maigi ng proactive kesa reactive. Alright, so number 18, which uh, illustrates a proactive. Proactive, that means ikaw ay meron ng things in place, meron ka ng routines, rules in place para ma-avoid yung problems inside your classroom. Teacher starts giving rule only after a violation. So dito, nag-react lang si teacher, no? So this is reactive. Letter B, teacher arranges the chairs to allow for a smooth traffic flow. Hindi pa nagkaka-traffic. Eh, meron na ginagawa si teacher. Letter C, teacher brings to the principal two boys engaged in a fight, no? So nag-away muna bago dinala sa... Uh, principal, letter D, teacher reprimands a misbehaving student. So, nag-misbehave na siya at saka siya ay pinagalitan. And so, letter B, ang ating tumpak na choice for number 18. Okay? So, 18 po, letter B, ang um, ating tumpak na choice. Number 19, which is a proactive management practice. This is just related to the previous question, no? Tell them that you enforce the rules on everyone, no exception. Letter B, set and clarify your rules and expectations on day one. Letter C, punish the misbehaving pupils in the presence of their classmates. Or letter, uh, letter D, stress on penalty for every violation. Okay, what is our choice? Number 19, we are talking about proactive or preventive approach. Okay, the correct choice here, of course, tumpak naman itong letter A at letter D, no? Tumpak din po yan. Um, okay, letter C, hindi po natin gagawin to, especially if it is a high school student, no? Dahil sila ay na-embarrass kapag sila ay napapagalitan in front of their classmates. So usually, yung advice sa atin in terms of classroom management is even if there's one misbehaving student, you... Um, you address the class as a whole. No? So, i-address mo yung class as a whole para hindi naman na-pinpoint yung isang isudyante lamang. 
Ang ating tumpak na choice here, of course, would be letter B. No? Set and clarify rules and expectations on day one. And of course, also very important that you stay consistent sa inyong rules. Now, dapat consistent. Pag sinabi mong tatawagan ko yung parents mo mamaya, tatawagan mo talaga. Pag sinabi mong ira-write up kita, ira-write up mo siya talaga. No? Wag, wag mong pahabain yung pasensya kasi minsan po ay uh, naaabuso. Ganon din naman sa relasyon, di ba? Pag sinabi mong mag cool off tayo or ibibreak kita kapag ka ikaw ay nagkamali, kahit once lang, gawin mo talaga. Huwag mong patawarin kasi minsan ay uh, lumalaki yung sungay, no? Kasi pag pinapahaba mo yung pasensya mo, minsan ay naaabuso. So, huwag kang magpaabuso. Uh, stay true to your rules. Be consistent sa inyong rules. No? That's letter B for number 19. We move on with question number 20. Last question tonight. Again, remember, we have our class tomorrow, no? Um, may klase po tayo bukas huwag pong kalimutan still at 7pm meron po tayong quizzes bukas still I will try to post it no as early as I wake up at 5.30 para mas marami kayong chance na masagutan ang iba kasi nating mga uh, mothers dito ay nagsasabi na mas maiging mas maaga kasi tulog pa yung mga nang aagaw daw ng cellphone nila okay so when I wake up at 7 uh, not 7 at 5.30 I will be posting the links sa ating last final coaching tomorrow at 7pm of course we are going to have our discussion by tomorrow night okay wala po tayong pasok libre po kayo mag-date sa Friday all right, number 20, teacher D strives to draw participation of every student into her classroom discussion. Which student need is she trying to, uh, to address? No, lahat ng students niya ay pinapa-participate niya. The need to, letter A, show their abilities para lang mag-show off ng ability yung ating, um, yung ating mga estudyante. Letter B, so that the students would feel fulfilled that received student so that the students would feel significant and be part of the group or letter d so that the students can become creative okay and ang tumpak na choice here of course you are saying letter c at letter c po ang ating tumpak na choice okay so letter c ang tumpak na choice for question number 20 so that the students would feel significant and be part of the group Everyone should contribute. No? Hindi naman ito necessarily na classroom discussion. Po pwede siyang, for example, planning for your Christmas party. Malapit, malapit na yung mga Christmas party. No? So planning for your Christmas party. I want all of you to participate because I want all of you to feel significant, that you are important, and that you are a part of our group. Okay, so that's letter C for number 20. And of course, that ends our discussion for tonight. Again, after this, please do complete your Google form. Kung hindi pa po kayo nakakakompleto ng ating Google form, kompletuhin na po, i-include yung inyong FB names, no? because we are trying to check kung talagang member kayo ng Gurung Pinoy. And of course, make sure na meron kayong PDF reader, may enough storage yung inyong phone if you are using your phone to review. And um, valid yung inyong email address na walang .edu.ph. Okay? That ends a nice discussion. This has been Coach Mac of Gurung Pinoy. Of course, kitang -kita, magkita-kita po tayo bukas. I leave with the saying, malit man na buti ng mga kaalaman. Ang dulunto ay malaking kaginawaan. Maraming salamat. Good night.